Alright guys, welcome back. We're going to go ahead and solve another fluid statics problem where we're looking at a rectangular gate. So here we have a uh, water um, and that water is on top of a tilted gate this time. And what we're trying to do is just determine the force acting on this gate and the location where on this gate is this force acting. So we obviously we have a some type of F so this is f of r and we also know, want to know y sub p so what's y sub p on this gate so for that we're going to use our equations which we've already used previously and we'll go ahead and assume that in this gate also we have uh, atmospheric pressure acting on top of the gate so we have atmospheric pressure up here and we have atmospheric pressure acting also on the other side of this gate. So maybe it's a dam or something. That will help us to simplify this problem. So if we do that, what we'll do is, if we assume the atmospheric pressure is negligible here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and cancel out this p naught. Okay, because atmospheric act pressure acts on both sides of the gate and it ends up canceling itself out with the other side of the gate. So if we go to calculate the resultant force, okay, resultant force, and we'll assume this is just water acting on it, okay? So the water has a, den water has a density of 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed times gravity times Y sub C sine theta. Uh-oh, so now we have to do some calculations, additional calculations to determine what y sub c is. But let's just think about where y sub c is going to be. So let me draw, go ahead and extend the water. So uh, if we look at a diagram in our text, y sub c is going to be from the location of the centroid of the submerged gate, which would be somewhere in the middle here, right? Remember, this gate is rectangular. I have a very... Uh, largely illustrated that here next to the problem but the gate is 3.5 meters so that is from here to here is 3.5 meters 3.05 meters and it has a depth into the page of 1.5 meters so we know that the y sub c from that centroid up to the surface of the water this is going to be y sub c but how do we calculate that here we're going to have to use some geometry in order to calculate what that y sub c is going to be. All right. So let's do some geometry. So right now, what we know is if we have a draw a big triangle here, we know this angle is 36.9. This is r, right? Our hypotenuse. Uh, if we look at the height of this, let's look at the big triangle. So the big triangle is going to be have a height of 4.57. We can solve for r, so r sine of 36.9 equals to 4.57. So solving for r, we can calculate r to be 7.61 meters okay so that's the whole distance so here this is the surface of the water that's the distance from the surface of the water to the bottom of the lake or the bottom of the dam whatever it would be so what is y sub c well we know the height of the gate here this height is 3.05 uh, meters which means that this has to be 4.56 meters. So y sub c is going to be 4.56 plus um, 3.05 divided by 2. This comes out to be 6.05 09 meters. So this is y sub c, okay? 
So it's important. We just had to use some geometry in order to determine where y sub c is. Okay, so y sub c is 6.09 meters. And sine is not 90 in this case, like it was in our previous problem. Here it's going to be 36.9 degrees. Because that's the angle between our gate and the floor of our dam. And you guys can also look at the diagrams in your text to make sure on a test, for example, if you want to make sure that what is what symbol in this equation corresponds to what, you will need to uh, you can do that with your textbook. Oh, and I need to multiply that times the area of this gate that's submerged, and that's 3.05 times 1.5. So our resultant force here is uh, 164 kilonewtons. Okay. So that's the magnitude of the force. Now let's find where it's acting. So the force is acting at the centroid, remember? So it's at the centroid plus... So y sub p is equal to the y of the centroid plus a little bit more. Okay, this is a little bit more here. So their centroid, we already determined, is 6.09 plus the moment of inertia term, which again we can get from our textbook, a b cubed over 12. A here is. 1.5, B is 3.05, so this is A times B cubed, 3.05 cubed, divided by 12, and this is all divided by 6.09 times the area of this gate, 3.05 times 1.5. Okay. So this comes out to be 6.22 meters. So we found the magnitude, and we also found where the force was acting relative to the surface of the water. You can express this several different ways, OK? But uh, uh, I think that kind of summarizes the type of fluid statics problems that we're going to be dealing with here. Um, we also covered buoyancy, and we'll talk about that more during the class. Uh, for now, we're going to go ahead and move on now to um, the next chapter, which is dealing with Bernoulli and energy equations.